Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll make a, a very brief contribution to this debate in, in, in support of the, of the, the bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, first thing I'd just like to perhaps just to contrast the discussion to date. On the one hand, we have the opposition being very alarmist and reading all sorts of things in this bill compared to the, the local member for this area who has provided a very thoughtful consideration of what he sees are the benefits of this process. So, if I was going to rely on anybody's um, uh, contribution, I think the local member's contribution would out outweigh those uh, on my right. Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, a couple of things which I need to be. Uh, mentioned, which um, I think the opposition spokesperson talked about, he said about the cost and comparing this to the landscape boards. The very difference between this and the landscape board elections, which were deferred by the minister, was, was quite simple. One, this is going to two council areas, the ballot paper is the same, it goes to two identical things which the electoral commissioner will be involved in anyway. The difference with landscape boards, they've got different boundaries. The different electoral roles, etc. So there's a whole range of different process. It's a separate process that cannot be compared. They're like um, they're like chalk and cheese. So it's disappointing that the member who represents the opposition voice, voice in local government didn't understand that basic difference. And and Mr. Speaker, that uh, all this all this proposal does, as, as a member for uh, Mount Gambier said, is actually just provides a process for examination. And so. The examination of this process and the outcome of this process could actually be it's, it's important because it could actually empower both the council and the community to act. And I think it's important. That's something we haven't thought about is that this process could actually empower both the community to inform its councils or those councils who are a bit reluctant to do anything. If, there, if it's a yes vote, they go ahead and do it. It's a no vote. It empowers the council to say no and both the community say no. So it is an empowering process. Despite what the member for Heysen has said, it is respectful of that local community. Nothing could be more respectful than asking the people direct for their views, their values, etc. Uh, at the moment, um, in reality, because of the costs involved in the processes, is that really the council is the only people who have a say, and my council is actually involved in the process at the moment, which costs heaps of money, and I'm not even sure if people actually support it, because we've never been asked. We just haven't been asked by our councils. So uh, the other thing is that I think this, this is probably a good thing. This, as a, as a, a side benefit, will, could increase the, um, the, out, the number of people who go to vote this election too. I think this will actually energise that community it, uh, and get, encourage them to vote. Uh, so, which, in, which in again, will help those candidates who are running for this election and who are successful, because this will help empower them to make the necessary decisions after the election, because they can use the result of the, of the plebiscite to say, yes, we should continue or no, people don't want it. So it is, again, an empowering process. And it is an act of leadership to actually engage with the community and give them a say uh, in, in, in the direction their community should say. And it's given people a voice to actually be heard uh, when often they don't get heard at all. And you get a chance to be heard at the very first stage of any process. That's very important. Normally, people get asked to comment into the process when a lot of decisions have been already made and it's often tick a box uh, consultation. This is actually consulting, this plebiscite is actually consulting the community at the very first step before anything else happens. Uh, Mr Speaker, what's also very important and which the uh, member for Heysen tried to muddy the waters, in the, this bill in no way abrogates the need for a second process under the existing Local Government Act. That process would go ahead, and there's a number of checks and balances in that process itself. This, is in addition to that, this, this actually gives people an additional opportunity to have their voice heard, the whole, the whole community itself. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this also what we could find out from this process is, does this actually inform us about how perhaps future processes could, could be held? Is this actually some valuable lessons to be learnt from this process as well? Uh, and it's not a new issue. It might be a new issue for the member for Heysen. It might be a new issue for the member for Flinders. But in the South East, this is not a new issue. This has been talked about for decades, this issue down in the South East. So it's not new. It might be new for the member's opposition, but certainly not new for the community down there. And the other thing is, the reason it's been held now, simple. Minimise the cost to the taxpayer. 
there's already an existing process electoral commissioner. We piggyback that process and keep the cost down, and we make sure that people are aware of it and get involved. So, Mr Speaker, with those few words, I would certainly encourage support for this bill.